John Matone's law number 17 about organization, about the organization you must create. Hi, we're here today. John Matone law number 17 states, it's not about the organization you want to create. It's about the organization that you must create. This is Rich and Michael with Mainline Executive Coaching, ACT, 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 Take Action. And ACT, uh, ACT is also an acronym, meaning Cultural Training and Transformation, ACT. So as a leader, you know you must act. Today, we're going to be talking about what you must do to create the organization that you dream, that produces the results that you must achieve to have the success, the, thri the thriving business that you want. Got through that one. Phew. So wait a minute, wait a minute, let's just get this straight. You are the boss, you're the chief, you're the CEO, you're the head of the whole thing, and there are things that that you must do. I thought that's the whole point of being, being the boss. You don't have to do these things. You, you must, you don't have, there's no must to do for you. But is that true? Well, we're gonna find out today. And uh, let's get started here. With us today, we are honored to have Donna Tarantino. She has a very different background from the other coaches we've been interviewing. Yet it's a fascinating background that she's going to share with us. So let's start, Donna. Give us your me in 60 seconds elevator speech. Oh, gosh, 60 seconds. Such a short time. <laughs> Thank you very much for allowing me to join you today. I'm very excited to talk about the topic and to discuss it. So my background, um, most of my career has been in beauty, wellness, um, and fashion. Um, and I've worked in New York City, um, Philadelphia, and now I'm located in Minneapolis. So I've worked in some very interesting industries from Macy's to QVC to Shop HQ, HSN, working every, every realm of a brand in more consumer product uh, categories, um, brand management, product development, uh, marketing, merchandising, financial planning, all the pieces that are necessary to create a, a successful brand and business. Um, I've, I started two direct-to-consumer divisions in my career, started my own brand management business um, and consulting business, as well as worked with numerous beauty brands, small beauty brands, and making them powerhouse brands. It's been a lot of fun and a amazing ride with the people and organizations that I've worked with. Wow, that's quite a ride is right. Yeah. Thank you for sharing all that with us. So you bring a lot to the, the whole thing about coaching, coaching people in business in that whole industry. Wow, that's that's impressive. Okay, well, let's get down to, to some basics here. This idea of, of, a, of the organization that you must create, it's got a lot of pieces to it. If you're taking a look at what John's laid out for us, uh, we're going to take a small bite of that, what that's all about. I want to start out with this particular piece called can do, this whole notion of can do, the, the principle, the precept, the practice of can do. So let's start with you here. Donna, tell us about this mindset practice of can do. How have you used the can do principle in your business? I mean, I think uh, can do is to have a positive, open mind going into something. Right, being being um, a listener, active listening, listening to others. Um, you know, you've got to be able to have the skill set to, to take something forward. And in order to do that, as a leader and even as an organization, your team needs to be open to hearing different different innovative ways of doing something. There's not just one way. Um, and it it also when you think about an organization. It's the culture that you create to get you from can do to, to the must do. Um, everybody needs to be willing, needs to be compassionate about it, need to move forward. Because without that, it's not going to move forward. And just through my through my years of consulting with, with companies, that whole trust factor needs to be right there at the can do. You need to trust one another to pass the baton to others to do the things that need to be done to get to the must do. Yeah, gotcha. Excellent. So can do, there's a lot of stuff these days about what you can't do, right? You can't do that. You can't do that. Oftentimes, as children were raised up, well, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. So breaking out of that, just give us a little bit more ideas about uh, can do, Rich. You know, there's a lot of opportunity out there for, for leaders and a lot of ways to learn 
and to gain knowledge and to grow within your organization. So as far as the things that you can do, uh, there's really no excuse for that. I, I, I don't think there is. There's a lot of things out there that you can do to bring your organization around, to bring, you know, additional culture to your organization. And that's really working, you know, leadership coaching. There's one There's one thing that you can do, being, uh, you know, getting coaching. But the other thing to do, you can do is, is be present, engaged. Look at the, the people around you. You can do that. You can do that every single day. You can be present. You can be vigilant. You can be vulnerable. You can be courageous. Mm -hmm. Can do talks a lot about it's. It's really referencing the idea of you've got competencies, you've got skills. There's things that you've done. There's things that you've accomplished, and it's this idea of I can do it. I can do it. The next step here we're going to go into uh, Donna is this. Since I have these competencies. I have these abilities that these skills and these practices that I've done over a period of time. The next question is this, will I, will I do it? Which is now we're talking about commitment. So you got it, you've got the power or you can learn to get the power, right? Mm -hmm. Now you've got it going and rolling forward, that commitment, the will do, tell us why that's important. That will do is the, to your point, you're talking about commitment, that, when you make a commitment, it's not only to yourself, but it's to the others that you are working with and to the organization. Um, and again, it goes back to some of those leadership traits that are really important. Um, you know, the trust factor, that's number one. You, you're trusting the people you work with to move it forward and to start that, whatever those steps are to move it forward. You're not just talking now, you're walking the walk, right? You've got to move it forward or else it's not going to, the must do is not going to happen. Um, you have a sense of duty to do that too when you're working with people. Um, and, and you've got, when you're a leader, you need to lead, you need to inspire, you need to motivate people. And that's really important in the will do when you get to will do. Very good. All right. Excellent. Rich, give us some more light on that, would you? On the will do, that really comes down to the, are, are, you, are you able to, really to step back and take a look at what you're capable of doing. Mm -hmm. You're capable of doing far more than you think. And it just comes down to being vulnerable and looking at that inner core and how, are, you, are you willing to do it? You know, I guess will do or are you willing? I, I think that really is what it comes down to. Um, are you willing to make those changes? Are you willing to go the extra mile in order to make you and your organization successful? You know, here's a, here's a thing. Let me add one more thing, Michael. It's, you know, being a leader is is a privilege. It's a privilege. And so often those things that you you can do, you will do, must do, have a permanent impact on those people around you, their career path, if you will. Their career path that it may impact, you know, not only their future, but their family's future as well. Mm -hmm. You know, there are certain things as a leader that, you know, when we're on that path to must do, you know, the can do and will do, you know, you have to do those things. It really is a privilege. It, it's an honor to be a leader and people are counting on you. It's an interesting thing that leaders take a look at when they take leadership positions. Oftentimes they're looking at the perks. What are the perks that I get because I'm taking this leadership mm -hmm. position? You know what I think the biggest perk that a leader gets? You get the perk of leading these people. That's the biggest perk of all. That's it, man. So let's look at it this way. Can do. I got a lot of things that I can bring to it as as a, as a leader. Um, and then will do. Now that becomes a little slippery, a little bit of a slippery slope because sometimes we just kind of want to hold back. We just don't want to give it our all. There's a you know I'll do a lot of it, but there's something I'm going to hold back. And it's and it's really kind of a trap that people lay for themselves of. I don't want to have to say that I put it all out there and then I failed. I don't want to take that chance. So I'm going to hold back just a little bit. So it, it's a sneaky kind of way of withholding, of sabotaging not only yourself, but also your organization and the other people that you're working with. That's a bad deal. That's not a good deal to do that at all. So that really then moves us into this whole thing. Okay, you got the capacities and you're committed to doing it. Now you must kick it in and you must do it. You must give it your all. This is where this must do really kicks in, kicks in as Don was talking about. It's a sense of duty. 
It's not, mm -hmm. do I want to, do I not want to? I mean, all that kind of silly stuff. At some point, it's like, this is what I committed to, and therefore, I must do it. So, Rich, to give us a little bit more about must do. I mean, the importance, the seriousness of just that entire commitment of I'm in it, I'm doing it. Okay, so let's let's look at some statistics right now. Um, 38% of all executives right now start having a thin leadership pipeline as a serious risk to their future and their organizations. 44% of all leadership organize, uh, leadership positions are now held by millennials. And a lot of those are saying that we have not got the right leadership uh, training, leadership coaching or experience to move these uh, companies forward. How, how much, Michael, have you and I talked to people about, about their turnover, yeah. especially in leadership positions? Every time someone in a leadership position changes or leaves the company, the culture changes, the vision changes, the mission changes. So, you know, let's, let's look at this from a different point of view, too. I come from an FDA regulated background. Uh, dealing with, you know, and I've also dealt, you know, extensively with ISO and all of both FDA regulations and ISO are based on what's called shall statements. You shall have something in place that addresses these issues that have been set forth. Okay, those are things you must do. You have to follow those guidelines. Well, a lot of it is in the same thing as being a leader, guiding a, an organization. There are some shall statements in there you that you will really have to follow with the leader you've got to build that culture you've got to get a uh, an organization that's focused on continuous improvement and not only that inclusion everybody needs to be involved and on the same page working towards a goal if that doesn't happen then you know it's just like 75 percent. we've talked about this before 75 percent of all those organizations out there who try to really make a change fail and why is that? Why is that? It's because someone at the top, and really this is culture and all this it must do is a leadership down uh, exercise. Someone dropped the ball. Absolutely. Yeah. They there the ball. Change culture, yeah. you know, in a company and there's a 75% failure rate, it will always go back to leadership failure. What are your thoughts on that, Donna? I agree. I mean, I've, I've worked for companies that had amazing culture. Amazing. I mean, you walked in the building, you lived and breathed it. You know, you were happy to be there. And then it, it, all, it all comes down to the leadership because they too were willing to work side by side with you. They were vulnerable. They, were, they knew they had a sense of duty. They had to get the job done in order to be successful. Um, you know, when it comes down to leadership, you've got to have the right talent that's willing to take the, the extra step to, to make, make good culture happen. It's not something that happens overnight. It's something that needs to be practiced and it's something that you need to live. You just don't shut the door. It's something that's part of you. And when you've experienced it, you can feel it. So I think leadership and culture, should, culture go hand in hand without the right leader or leadership at, at the top, that whole executive team. If it's not right, the culture is not going to be right. And you, exactly. you see it when you walk into an office, you know. Um, you know, people tend to think sometimes you, gotta, you have to want it. You have to want to be successful. You've got to want to have your people want to do well too. It's not, it's not about you. It's not this, you know, it truly is about everyone and it's people focused. You know, a lot of times I use the word people as opposed to team because we're humans, we're people. We all have similar traits, right? We see that with the inner core, the wheel, right? So we need to be mindful of that um, to make it work. So here we've got, You've got leadership, and we've been talking about leadership and culture. And I don't want to leave out this other piece because this other piece is a big part of it. It is your strategic plan. We're not saying you get rid of your strategic plan. We're not saying you throw that out the window because you got to have a, a nice, wonderful, sweet culture. We're saying that these three pieces, 
leadership, the strategic plan and culture are when you really bring them together with wise wisdom, with wise leadership and people that are really ready to go get this thing done. That's what creates the best, the best companies, the best output in terms of products and services, so on. That's how that all works. All right, let's wrap this up here. We're coming to the end here. Donna, if somebody wants to have that talk with you about what it's all about and what it is that you can do for them as an executive coach in your particular industry, Donna, how do they do that? How do they get a hold of you? Um, they can certainly go to my website, which is www.donnacorno.intelligentleadershipec.com. That's a mouthful. <laughs> um, or um, email me at dtarantino at intelligentleadershipec.com. Or uh, LinkedIn. Right. Check out my LinkedIn profile. All right. I'll make sure I put that on the podcast and everybody can get a hold of Donna. Outstanding. Thank you so much, Donna. Thank you. For joining today. Rich, you know what to do. Let's wrap it up. All right. Once again, thank you for joining us today. We appreciate uh, you listening. And if you have any comments or something you want to hear about on an upcoming episode, mainlineleadersact at gmail.com. That's mainlineleadersact at gmail.com or richbaron.intelligentleadershipec.com. And that's soon to change. We'll be adding Michael to that as well. So it's going to be a completely different website uh, name. And so just uh, stay posted for that. And don't forget to subscribe. Once again, uh, thank you very much and take care. All right. All the best to you folks. Don again. Thanks so much. Thank you. Once again, thank you for joining us. If you have any suggestions or comments, or something you'd like to hear about on a future podcast, email us at mbailey at intelligentleadershipec.com or rbaron at intelligentleadershipec.com or go to our website, richbaron.intelligentleadershipec.com. Once again, thank you and take care.